Hello, I'm Rahul from the Fun Robotics Network, and in this video, we're going to be breaking down the exciting robot gameplay in the Fun Robot in 30 Hours, which is some of our first looks at real decode gameplay in this amazing shooter game. We'll be looking at how different robot archetypes are approaching the game, how defense is being played at the secret tunnel and launch zones, and how alliances are cooperating together in the autonomous period. Check out more on this episode of Fun Analysis. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Studica Robotics is inspiring teams to build better robots with their new array of FTC team options. Check out their updated bevel gears and Maverick hex shaft motors, planetary gearbox options, and 6mm hex components and shafts for extreme power transmission. Go to studica.com slash robots to learn more and apply for discounts. Go ad free and access our videos earlier when you support fun with a membership through YouTube Join. For $4.99 a month USD, you can now watch most of our YouTube videos ad-free and gain early access to scheduled content with other options also available. Click the join button below to get started. We're going to be starting off by breaking down match number two and right off the bat we see a really impressive auto from the Red Alliance. We can see that immediately team 13201 comes off the goal area, moves forward and gets straight into their shots while 16460 is going to actually get to their spots, get into that close launch zone to get more accurate shots, but they're actually gonna wait to fire their shots, which seems like they've coordinated or pre-planned. And at a high level, this is gonna be really important when alliances really want to knock down those motif points and getting balls mixed and out of order will completely can cause a lot of points to lose them in a match. Here we can see 16460 getting their shots off after 13201 has fired theirs, leading to a six artifact auto right off the bat, which is super impressive for a robot in 30 hours. Now, beginning the tally up period, we're gonna see some different strategies based on the different robots. We'll notice that, we'll see here that 13201 is gonna be operating more as a collector and collector robot. There's gonna be a ton of ball, tons of artifacts scattered throughout the field. And 13201 is going to be going around and picking them all up and sort of cleaning up the field while the other Red Alliance robot, 16460, is going to be focusing more from the Red Secret Tunnel and picking up balls. And I think part of that is based on how accurate your intake is. If you have a more an intake that requires more precision, you're probably going to be going more to the human player area, while a more wider one would be more off for uh, cleaning up artifacts that get scattered throughout the field. Now, the Blue Alliance does some interesting things. Team 26691 almost immediately takes a beeline to the human player zone, the loading zone, to get those balls loaded in and they're going to be cycling a diagonal cycle similar to 16460 on the red alliance while 13201 is going to be a more scattered one on the red alliance now something we'll see going a little forward is that 4115 on the blue alliance hits their hits the gate for the red goal and now this is actually illegal which we'll see the ref point out a penalty perhaps the drivers hadn't fully read the rules on it understandable in 30 hours but you're only allowed to contact your own gate, which would be on the other side for 4115. And But what we see is this, this creates an interesting dynamic where almost all of the artifacts are placed in this bottom right corner. This for And this is a very dangerous area for the red zone to go in. If the red zone contacts another blue robot while the blue robot's in the secret tunnel, that's going to incur a lot of penalties, which means that uh, 16460 and 13201 are going to have to deal with the balls outside of that zone and that kind of creates an interesting dynamic because had 4115 not opened that gate, is 13201, the Red Alliance robot, incentivized to open their own gate? Because if that only leads a, gives a bunch of artifacts to the opposing alliance and sort of clusters them in their area, which it's very difficult to try and steal one. If, 13201 wanted to come around and steal one. Uh, another alliance, 26691, could simply like sort of pin them, nudge them against the wall, and that would incur a lot of penalties. Now, going forward, we're gonna kind of see that balls will sort of start to spread out. So the red alliance will continue to get some, get some in their zone. It seems that 4115 is having some troubles with their shooter. So we're gonna see some a lot of congestion in this middle area if we go back a little, that this launch zone is not protected. So Teams that are shooting from this launch zone, they have to be careful. Robots are allowed to hit them while they're shooting or push them, nudge them. It's not a protected scoring area like we've seen in the past when teams are scoring, which makes for a lot of interesting strategies. Um, if you continue to go forward, we can see that 13201 is once again sort of uh, collecting and cleaning up the field while 26691 continues these um, diagonal cycles on the blue path, either going from the uh, 
far, sh far shooting zone or the close shooting zone. And 16460 continues to intake from that red secret tunnel. Now, this is another case where 4115 is very close to the gate. And you'll notice that they end up do opening the gate, which could be an oversight on the driver's hand. But what actually is interesting is had they not even opened the gate, just being in this area is a very dangerous situation. Uh, 13201 could quickly come over and try to open the gate themselves. And if they touch 4115, that's going to incur a ton of penalties because they're stopping them from getting on that red stripe line. So this is a very dangerous area for the blue zone to be on. But then again, you also have to think red 13201 coming over here has to be very careful if 4115 quickly jolts out of the way. 26691 is kind of in, in their own secret tunnel. If they have, if 13201 happens to contact 26691, that's gonna be penalties for the red alliance. So that creates this interesting dynamics of weighing the penalties where 4115, it might honestly be trying, try, they could try to bait them to come over here while 26691 goes into their secret tunnel, makes contacts and red alliance gets that penalty, which is gonna be something super interesting to see at the high level. So we're gonna see that 4115 ends up opening the gate and that's gonna cause more balls to roll in that bottom right corner. But balls continue to uh, roll out and 13201 continues. They have a really effective intake early season which really allows them to clean up the field. Their cycle times are so much shorter than, than for example, their alliance partner because they're not having to go all the way to the loading zone or all the way to the secret tunnel to pick up artifacts. They're picking up artifacts from everywhere along the field, which makes them a super versatile robot. And I think at a high level, teams with these really wide, large intakes are going to be really effective at cleaning up the field, while teams with more specialized ones might be uh, better at going from the human player or the loading zone. Now, again, we some, see some more congestion towards the end of the match here where 4115 shooters seem to not be working and they're actually going to kind of push around 16460 as they try and get, get set for their shot. Almost makes them miss that shot and, and they actually do miss that one with 4115 if we replay that, pushing them back towards the end. And um, that's going to create another interesting dynamic. Again, if you push a push uh push the other alliances robot out of the launch zone and they happen to shoot the artifact outside of that launch zone we can see that 16460 was very close to being out of the launch zone if 4115 had pushed them a, even a little further that's going to be really difficult that, that's going to be penalties for the red alliance because they're shooting the artifacts outside the launch zone again creates another interesting dynamic because of how the launch zones are not protected scoring zones and the next match we're going to be going over is Qualification 8. And in this match, we're going to see some really interesting things where robots are going to sort of fill certain roles. And then towards the end, we're going to see some really exciting defense from both lines. So let's get right into it. So right off the bat, we're going to be starting with Telyap after Autonomous has ended. You can see Blue Alliance has a slight lead. And what we're going to see is that right off the bat, the Red Alliance robot is going to sort of come off the wall and create this congestion with three robots straight in the launch zone. This is 9224 is is sort of going to push into 8680 and that's going to mess up one of their shots causing them to the miss and while the other blue lines robot 13201 is going to sort of continue to play the role of collector and clean up and picking up scattered balls and we'll see this play out you'll see that the red alliance robot 9999 is going to come out create this collection of three robots hitting each other and 9224 is going to sort of like be pushing against 8680 and they miss their shot now as the match starts to settle in, when robots settle in, we're gonna see the robots kind of occupy distinct roles. So 8680 and, I'll skip ahead a little, 8680 and 13201 are gonna kind of occupy similar roles. They have really wide intakes, which allow them to be, again, great cleanup bots. That's, that's the role they're gonna occupy for the majority of the match and score a ton of points. Now, uh, they're gonna have really similar roles but 9999 and 9224 are going to be kind of different where 9999 is going to sort of go to the far shooting zones and just kind of try to shoot from there and cycling from the loading zone with the human player. Now, that is a little faster, but can lead to some inaccuracy, which we'll see. But on the other hand, 9221 is sort of going to be doing this diagonal cycle where they're cycling from the human player to the closer launch zones, which we'll see as we play on. So 999 is going to immediately fill in that far launch zone and try and get shots up, while 9224 is going to drive diagonally to get their shots up from close with perhaps higher accuracy. And again, 13201 and 86AE are kind of cleaning up artifacts that get scattered across the field. Now, 
Uh, the, the robots will kind of occupy these roles for a bit of the match, but we're going to see something really interesting happen towards, towards the later end. All of a sudden, there's four robots in the launch zone with 30 seconds left. The match is 9 to 27, which means that the Blue Alliance has a huge lead and there's going to be a ton of like defense and intersection in this area when there's four robots in this relatively small area. If we fast forward a bit, 13201 is going to temporarily leave, but they're going to immediately push back. And I think the reason the drivers did this is they noticed a few things. One, their classifier ramp is pretty much full with artifacts. They've got, I think this is nine or eight artifacts on the ramp. Scoring more will likely just overflow and be much lower points. And at this point in the match, they're up nine to 27. There's no reason for them to continue cycling if they can reduce the amount of artifacts that the other alliance is going to score. Now, what we're gonna see them do in particular is what uh, the Red Alliance robot 9999 is gonna kind of be setting up to get their shots. and. 9224 is going to be kind of in the way on the so 13201 is going to quickly push 9224 out of the way and shove 9999 into the wall and cause them to miss their shots and this is a really interesting strategy by 13201 as they realize they're up in the match they have no reason to continue scoring let's stop the other alliance from scoring if we watch it play out we see 90 they push 9224 out of the way as 9999 is getting ready for their shots and then 13201 quickly shoves them towards and causing them to miss their shots now the robots are going to continue to get get it shoved and the red robots are kind of going to try to corner out 13201 but at this point it does not matter there's only 23 seconds and blue has an 18 point lead so 13201 is going to able to quickly spin out of their spin out of this and drive away and avoid getting trapped in this corner that you see they do that spin out and drive away now we're gonna see one more interesting thing again with the penalties we see that blue is on their gate zone with the red alliance contacting them this is a penalty on red because blue is on their tape line while the red contacts them now if we go forward a little blue is gonna drive into the red secret tunnel and red is gonna be contacting them so this time it's a penalty on blue so it's, it's that easy that the penalties can swap from which team it is depending on how close you are if you're in that gate, those tape lines or that secret tunnel. And then towards the end of the game, it's going to be really important in these defense field matches to really get that end game points. Uh, we'll, we're going to see the blue lines quickly get uh, one, full shul, one full and one partial at the end. That's going to secure them around uh, 15 points or so, which is really big in this match. And the last match we're going to be going over is Qualification 9, which again is a ton of close close contact and a crazy ending, which we definitely want to see. So if we just start the game off the bat, we're going to kind of see, uh, we're going to start in the middle of the tally up period. We're going to see 4115 going to try and knock off 9225 off their shots. The, again, the game is tied right now, 38-38. Every shot counts with one minute left. And they're going to drive over there. And with 13201's help, it's kind of going to force them to miss a few shots, which is a really big swing and kind of push them further, which might be more inaccurate. Now, 20293 is going to kind of continue to cycle, get a lot of points. And now you'll see their classifier ramp is pretty much full, while blues is a bit lagging, which does give blue a bit of opportunity to catch up as their artifacts are worth more. Now, if we if we continue to go forward, we're going to kind of see a similar gameplay with 13201 continuing to score and intake and try and fill up their classifier ramp, while 20293 is kind of getting some overflow points out here. And now if we kind of skip forward a little, what we're going to see at this point is that uh, 4115 is kind of going to be, again, doing a similar thing, kind of creating this wall. 9225 shoots their best shots when they're really close to this, this goal area to get them in. But 4115 is creating this wall, driving back and forth, not allowing them to cross. They drive forward here, then backwards, stop them, forces them to take a far, far away shot, which they end up do making. But again, it is a lower percentage shot. They go two for three right there, which is a huge swing in this crazy ending of a game. Now, we're gonna kind of continue to go forward. At this point, the game is tied, 42-42 with 20 seconds left every shot matters and both classifier ramps are full no alliance is going to open their gate at this point and risk losing out on a ton of those motif bonuses uh every alliance is going to be trying to stop the other alliance from scoring or try and get one last overflow in and we're going to kind of see the blue alliance go for that stopping strategy while the red alliance tries to fight their way to get one last overflow in and swing this game if we fast forward a bit what we're gonna see is we're gonna see four robots in that launch zone once again, and 
uh, going forward, we're going to see 20293 is setting up for their shot. They have a ball in their launcher, but 13021, 13201 notices they're right on the edge of the launch zone. A small push outside of the launch zone would make their shot illegal, and that's exactly what they do. They push them straight out of the launch zone. Uh, 20293 can no longer shoot, and that's a huge swing. That's one whole overflow ball which would have swung the whole match if we keep going forward what we're gonna see is again they're keeping that out of them that launch so now 13201 heads over to try and stop 9225 from getting their their shots in again 9225 struggles from far range they're much better from close range if they can push them towards these further ends of the launch zones it's gonna be much more of a difficult shot they do succeed in pushing them away completely outside of that launch zone just the blue alliance is completely shutting down the red alliance from getting any balls in. The, the blue alliance has given up on trying to get one last into the goal and overflow. They're fully focused on stopping that red alliance. Now, if we go forward, what we're going to see is that 20293 says, okay, there's 13 seconds left. Let's go park. Let's secure our 15 or 10 points and hopefully we'll get another partial for five. But the blue alliance has created this wall and 9225 says we're gonna try and get one last shot to swing the game 13201 and 4115 are forming this wall they're not letting 9225 cross at all they're trying to stop them from getting into this area but 9225 sort of sneaks around them over the edge 4115 is not able to stop them coming across and what we'll see is that 9225 sneaks across they they, they completely get past 13201 just right behind them and they're able to get one last shot off from around where they shoot and they get it in and that's a complete game swing that swings the whole game now 4115 is right here says okay there's still nine seconds let's try one last time let's get one shot however they end up missing the shot it bounces too low well again 9225s went in and um we'll see them they made oh sorry it went too high both teams go to park 9225 uh, goes to park, almost pushes 20293 out of the zone, and but both alliances get that 15 points in the end game period. And what we end up seeing is that it's a complete tied game, 69 to 69. Now, if we go back to that area where uh, where 9225 is trying to kind of sneak around uh, the other two blue alliances' walls, it's, it's so interesting how they were able to sneak off and get that one shot off sneak around this wall that the blue alliance is forming and this one shot ended up making the game go from a loss to a tie with that extra overflow point for the red alliance and that's it for this match thank you for listening and let us know in the comments if you think 13201 and 4115 could have stopped 9225 from getting off that last buzzer beater shot to send the game into a tie don't forget to like and subscribe this video to keep up to date on future fun content and i'm rahul verma signing off on fun analysis Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Studica Robotics is inspiring teams to build better robots with their new array of FTC team options. Check out their updated bevel gears and Maverick hex shaft motors, planetary gearbox options, and 6mm hex components and shafts for extreme power transmission. Go to studica.com robots to learn more and apply for discounts.